fire trio. Um, so me and two other artists will be performing with a variety of fire props. And we haven't had a chance to perform it uh, in quite a long time. It's myself and dancer Drita Blow. Uh, we've been working together in the last couple of years. When I look back in my history as an artist, as a performing artist, as a dancer, as a choreographer, I feel like I've been training all of my life to do something like this. I love site-specific work. Back in university, Montreal, we'd go downtown and do creative process where my life in Costa Rica was a lot of performance outdoors. I've been working with Hula Hoop since 2007. Um, I think I first started performing with them um, in 2010. Uh, so for quite a long time. If you're in dance or you're a performing artist or you're from uh, the body-centered practice, try and keep your body really healthy and really strong and really balanced. Right? Go outdoor for walks, train your body. In your living room, I've converted my living room into a training space. So it's really important to stay really centered and really balanced as a performing artist, as a dancer. Uh, practice makes better. and. Um... You know, perfection is this is this lofty goal that we can sometimes get caught up in, and it can hinder us a little bit. Um, and so, to to know that coming back to practice, uh, you know, you'll continually improve or develop something. Putting in the time matters, even when it doesn't um, feel like you're getting somewhere. That the, you know, part of art is is just about putting in the time and and doing it, and uh, it's cumulative. So so keep at it. And I would say maybe just unplug from the internet as much as possible because I've noticed the pandemic makes us go online a lot and that's fine for certain things. But I feel as an artist, I need that quiet space. Part of what I enjoy is performing. And so the difficulties that we're experiencing with bringing audiences together when we have concerns about spreading the coronavirus really uh, require you to reimagine what what a work could look like. The way we are as dancers when we go into the studio or when you know we we're so body centered and we're so interactive that touch that we dance together in, per in proximity we hear each other's breath you know and for me that was a very sad moment when I realized we're not doing that. It's really different when you're not connecting to a crowd and so that sense of connection being lost is something that is is really challenging in this particular art form so i feel like the biggest challenge right now is for all of us to ask that question and get into that dialogue together to figure out how we're going to bring about this aliveness of our art in connection with our audience in a pandemic one of the things I strive to do is to create magic moments for people, you know, those moments of awe. And uh, if there's no one else there, <laughs> that, that is um, not really possible. So the distance is definitely a big challenge. One of the things that I was the most excited about was just the chance to work with Jeremy and Opal. Going out there and being in my artistic practice knowing I'm in my element when I'm creating and when I'm dancing and being inspired. Reimagining this work in different spaces um, has been really has been really deeply satisfying and it was one of the reasons why I wanted to participate. It was like what a great moment to be called um, back into this practice and to have this opportunity to rehearse with my team. Working with public energy to feel that support, that there's a support, this is organization that's driving and fueling and saying, yeah, go ahead, do that, you know? And, and it's all its weirdness because I feel we're so vulnerable. What I'm here to offer some light, you know, and some hope. And I feel like that's what live art does it's about making connection it feels like a real gift thank you for doing this